Maddie, and today I'm finding out about a type of machine that can help us do lots of different things. They can clean our floors. Some can even help us build things. We can even play with them. Do you know what they are? That's right, robots. robots that help farmers to grow the food we eat. But how do farming robots work? Let's find out. How does it work? Farming robots. To find out how robots work, I've come here to a robot workshop. At this robot workshop, they design farming robots to put to the test in the testing field out here. I've been given special permission to have a look. This robot is called Tom, but I think it looks a bit like a huge deer with antlers. Tom has a very important job on the farm. Do you know what a weed is? A weed is a wild plant that's growing where it's not wanted. The farming robots can help to get rid of the weeds so that the crops have a lot more room to grow. The robots also listen to wildlife and use special cameras to search for insects. And it's Tom's job to help find the weeds. This is Nemo, and Nemo is a robotics engineer. It's his job to look after Tom when it's out in the field. Tom's first job is to look around the field. We call this scanning. Tom is a scanning robot. Oh, off he goes. Tom uses special cameras to do the scanning. Let's see how many cameras there are. One, two, three, four. Four cameras. Each camera can take three photos every second. One, two, three. We call the cameras hyperspectral. That means they can take photos of things that the human eyes can't see like hidden insects. Tom also has some sensors that help it navigate where to go. I'm going to put some of my special cameras on Tom so we can see what Tom's cameras see. This screen and my special camera are showing me what Tom's hyperspectral cameras are seeing. They're scanning the field, looking for weeds, animals, insects and crop plants. Have you noticed that Tom works really quietly? That's so it doesn't disturb any wildlife. But Tom is listening for wildlife too. It's recording the sounds. So if any animals, like birds, are in the field, Tom will record the sound and let the farmer know that they're living in the field. It will take Tom about three days to scan this entire field, but when it's done, it will send all the pictures to Wilma. Wilma is an artificial intelligence, or AI, that works on this computer. AI means that Wilma is programmed to learn, solve problems and work automatically. Wilma uses Tom's photographs to build a map that show where all the crops, weeds, animals and insects are in the field. The map is then sent to our next farming robot called Richard. But to find out how Wilma, an artificial intelligence, works with two farming robots to get the job done, I think we need to take a closer look. Robot Tom uses a hyperspectral camera to scan the field. It can see things we can't see because it uses different types of light. It uses ultraviolet light, infrared light and X-ray light to see weeds, animals, insects and crops more clearly. The cameras can take pictures of where they are. Tom is then plugged into Wilma and all the pictures and information are sent over. Wilma processes the pictures and information from Tom and stores the pictures and information onto a database, like a big library. Wilma then uses artificial intelligence to build a map of the field, showing where the weeds, animals, insects and crops are. The map is saved on Wilma's 
hard drive and sent to Robot Richard so it can head out to the fields to find the weeds. How brilliant is that? And look, here's Robot Richard now getting ready to do its very important job. Can you remember what it is? That's right, removing the weeds. What do you think this part does? It's called a probe and it uses electricity to remove the weeds. The electricity is pointed exactly at and into the weed, which gets rid of it. Do you remember how some weeds can be a problem for farmers because they can stop crops growing properly? Some farmers might use herbicides to help get rid of the weeds, but herbicides can be harmful to wildlife. So by using farming robots, the farmers don't have to use herbicides and that helps the environment. Let's see Robot Richard in action. So we can see what Richard sees, I put one of my special cameras on the robot. Because of the clever map that Tom and Wilma made, Richard only moves towards the weeds. Richard uses a GPS. That means global positioning system to follow the map that was made by Wilma. It's a little bit like a map you might have seen on a smartphone or in a car. The crops the farmer is growing in the field aren't harmed at all because the probe only removes the weeds. How brilliant that Wilma and the two farming robots work together to help the farmers manage their fields. That was so exciting. What was your favourite part about seeing how Wilma and the two farming robots work? Can you remember the name of the robot that gets rid of the weeds? That's right, it's called Robot Richard. Do you remember the sound Tom made as he scanned the field? That's right, he made very little sound so he didn't disturb the wildlife. <laughs> I'm making my own robot. Have you ever made your own robot to play with before? I'm using some old cardboard boxes, bits of recycled card, and I'm going to print out a mouth from my computer. Thank you. Things that are printed out like this, we call two-dimensional or 2D. It has sides and corners, but it's completely flat. Here we go. Lovely. But something like this we call three-dimensional or 3D because it has three dimensions. It's length, width and height. There are some printers that can print things that are 3D. But do you know how a 3D printer prints and makes things? Let's find out. How is it made? 3D printer. To find out how a 3D printer makes things, I've come here to a 3D printer workshop. And I've been given special permission to show you how 3D printing works. To print something in 3D with a printer like this one, we need something called filament. Filament? comes on a reel and this filament here is made of a material called polylactic acid or PLA. PLA is a natural material made from cornstarch and cornstarch comes from corn. PLA is a biodegradable material. That means it will break down naturally if left in the environment. Unlike some other plastics, they can take up to a thousand years to break down. PLA filament comes in all sorts of colours. Shall we choose one? How about yellow? Let's go with this one because I think it looks like a giant reel of spaghetti. 3D printers make all sorts of things like car parts, toys, even false teeth. To make a 3D design, Ollie uses something special on the computer called CAD or Computer Aided Design. Today, they're designing glasses frames. Using CAD, Ollie can move the design around so we can see what the glasses frames we're printing today look like in 3D. Next, another computer program will take this design and turn it into a set of instructions that the 3D printer will understand. This is called slicing. 
Slicing is when a computer builds an image of the design in very thin individual slices. This design can then be sent to a 3D printer and the 3D printer will print the slices and stack them on top of each other to make the 3D design. Now that the 3D printer has the slices of the design, it can start to print. And look, here's the yellow PLA filament that we chose. OK, Johnny, let's go. Wow! Can you see how the filament goes from the reel all the way up here, down into this part, and then it's coming out of the pointy bit at the bottom? That's the nozzle. Inside the nozzle, it's hot and the heat melts the solid PLA and makes it runny and soft so that it can be printed into any shape. It's a little bit like icing a cake. Can you hear that sound? That's the sound of a small motor working to move the nozzle so it can print the design. When the printer has finished the first layer, the gooey PLA filament hardens and the nozzle goes back to the start. It repeats the printing again and again, building everything up layer by layer. But to show you how this 3D printer will print some glasses frames, I'm going to use one of my special cameras. This is a time-lapse camera that lets us film something that takes a really long time, but when we watch it back, it will look like it's happening much quicker. OK, here we go. All set. It takes almost one hour for the 3D printer to create the glasses frames. Let's see what my special camera recorded. Here we go. Wow, look at the layers building up. Can you remember what that's called? It's slicing. Look how bright the yellow PLA filament is. Isn't it fun to see the nozzle moving around really quickly? Now, let's go look at the finished object. Look at my finished glasses. Shall I try them on? What do you think? All they need now are some lenses. It's been so much fun finding out how a 3D printer makes things. What was your favourite part? Was it seeing the filament that looked like a long piece of spaghetti? Or was it watching the 3D printer on my special camera so we could see the layers build up? Wow, look at the layers building up. It's been so much fun finding out about 3D printing and seeing how Wilma and the two farming robots work together to help find and remove weeds so that crops can grow safely. There's Tom scanning the field now. I'll see you next time. <laughs>